my name is Dema Oduwale. Uh, that's Yoruba. O D U W L E. That's what get actually. And I work in global strategy. Oh, yeah. I just read your profile with you. Before we go to that, let's start with where Paul stopped. Paul said Nigeria's tourism industry is very young, and I was just say what's up there after the other. But then you mentioned that we need to leverage creativity, which is what Nigeria is known for. So I will push that to you. How can we grow Nigeria's tourism industry leveraging on creativity? Well, the first thing is we have to change the conversation. You know, you have to understand this. And, and I shared earlier that Nigeria does not have a brand. Sadly so. What Nigeria has is a reputation. So you have to change the conversation from reputation to brand. Can I differentiate between brand? Yeah. So, so a, a brand is something that people uniquely identify you with. Usually it has a lot of positive attributes. A reputation, on the other hand, is the opposite. It's something negative that people know about you and that people do not want to be associated with that. So sadly, Nigeria, in the last many years, does not have a brand. It has a reputation. So how do we change that? We find the positive stories. I give an example. A couple of months ago, they had the Ojudoba Festival in Nigeria that now is not even Nigerians talking about it. Globally, people are talking about it because of how unique it was and a particular standout person. So that's an example. What do we do? You take that experience and you push it. I would say this to people. Tourism is very competitive and is also very fragmented. So I say to my clients this, listen, when the stage is crowded, you don't climb on the stage because it's crowded. No one is going to notice a climb on the stage. So what do you do? You explode on the stage. And when the time to look to say what just happened, you bring your best speech and you push it hard and aggressively. That's how you begin to change the conversation. So, for example, the Judah that just happened a couple of months ago, that's an example of how you begin to change the conversation. You begin to build your reputation again in a positive way until you get to the branding side of things. Yeah, lovely. So, one of the things that I saw that I did was to grow, or you played a significant role in the U.S. automobile industry. And uh, Nigeria space is still almost invincible. So, how can we leverage this kind of uh, sport or this kind of brands or this kind of thing that people love you know, grow the tourism industry because I follow it a lot. I see the engagement with Formula One. I see the engagement with NASCAR. So how can we have something not similar? How can we have our own brand? <laughs> okay, so let me kind of clarify what I did. It was, I think it was 2008, 2009. The U.S. auto industry literally almost collapsed. GM was bankrupt. Chrysler was almost non-existent. I think only Ford just had some shekels, some money left in the pocket. And they'll approach the U.S. government. I think Bush is about leaving the White House and Obama was coming in. And they had a program called Cash for Clunkers, which means we'll give you some money for your old car. If your car is over seven years old, that thing is what we'll buy a car off of you. But I didn't think that was a solution. I said to them, I think you're all approaching this very wrongly, if I might use the word. I said, the issue is, first of all, there's no money in the system. And if there's no, no money in the system, there's no credits in the system. If there's no credit, people cannot buy the cars. If they cannot buy the cars, the manufacturers cannot sell their cars, which means there's a lot of cars on the lot that you can't move them. So I said, listen, you have to change your market focus. The first thing you want to do is find a new market very quickly for your existing inventory. And I said to them, take a look at the Middle East. The Arabs love American cars. They love our Chevys, our Jims, our Cadillac. Find those people. What do you do? Sell your cars on the lot for pennies on the dollar. What does that do? First, it frees your lot for cars. Second, it puts cash in your pocket. So now you can begin to manufacture more cars again. That was a simple approach again, because aside from that, they were having this complex process. And I said, that's not the solution. So one was, so I preferred one of the solution, prefer me where I offered one of the solutions to revamp the US auto industry. At that time, Vice President Joe Biden was in charge of the project, and that's who my office worked with. So I just wanted to clarify that. It was, yep, I offer one of the solutions. Yes. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll take you look that. What I took away from that is the approach that you mentioned. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million people. Right. And if that alone, you can bring them into the tourism industry, it's going to be a huge leap. So how can we leverage on that population? Because I can say out of 36, 36 states in Nigeria, a lot of us have not been to more than two or three or four. Okay. So how can we change that psyche that, so that people will become conscious and aware? Happy to, yeah. Well, this is honesty here. Our mindset has to change. No, no. And I mean, across the board, I'll give an example. We just had the Olympics in Paris, right? How many medals did Nigeria win? Zero. How much did they spend? When you have a competition and there's a cyclist who goes for the competition and has no bicycle, mindset has to change. When you have an athlete who was not registered in a race she was meant to run, 
mindset have to change. If the mindset begins to change, then our orientation begins to change as well. We have a lot of creative people. You have to change the narratives by looking at the positives and pushing those positives. Are people creative? There's a show called Iwaju on Disney right now. Iwaju is a Euro board meaning proceeding forward. It's on Disney for crying out loud. But Iwaju is not connected to Nigeria in any way. Ask an American who watches Disney show using Iwaju in Nigeria, they'll be like, no, it has nothing to do with it. But Iwaju is a Euro board phrase, which means our orientation has to change. We need to begin to tell a positive story and use that to leverage our branding. What is the biggest export Nigeria has today? Afrobeats. Some of the biggest talents today, they have sang other Grammys. That, that uh, uh, I think that that music is being used, you know, on the, for for big shows in the states. That there's Bruno Brothers, there's the video, there, there's Whiskey, there's there's Thames. That's the biggest export. But people overseas do not necessarily. I didn't say they don't. They do not necessarily connect that to Nigeria. That narrative has to change. That's the biggest expert. Remember what I said? You have to explode on the stage. Afrobeats is Nigeria's explosion on the stage. But sadly, they're not connecting the dot directly to say, these are made in Nigeria. It's not being done aggressive enough. It needs to be done because that's our trump card. That's Nigeria's calling card to begin to rebrand itself. What is your own perception of you know, You've not been in the country for a while. Bro, we've never had the world. So, and then, <laughs> you, 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 that, that is one. So the, the next is you from the city of what? Hollywood? Los Angeles, California. California. Uh, yeah, from California. And I'm sure you've seen all the two things that they put there that really stands out. I mean, everybody wants to resonate with uh, Hollywood or with California. So how can we replicate that this time around? So first, your perception of Nigeria and how can we So Nigeria is and would always be a land of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunities out here, but as I said, the mindset, our mindset has to change to everything. Our orientation has to change to everything. I'll stop there. In terms of LA, there's a lot of things they have there that we have here as well. First of all, one of the biggest things we have is a food industry, the restaurant, they go out to eat, I think. We have those here as well, but we can localize and have our own brands here. I'll give examples. It's not even Swiss Sensation. It's another those brand I saw. I think it was Mama Cats and one of those things that have a localized name. Who says we cannot export those to the United States? They are not Nigerians there. Imagine if, 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 if a Chicken Republic or Mamakas or an Okele opens a restaurant in the United States. They are not Nigerians there. This young man I met, his name is Odu Shalara, I forgot his last name, but he has a restaurant chain called Enish in London. I've spoken to him a couple of times. Is how do we use such a brand, Enish, to build Nigeria's brand, to build Nigeria's image overseas? So. What do I see in California? They have their own unique things, but we have our own that is special and unique to us that we can use to leverage and begin to change that perception of Nigeria from a negative to a positive, which means we begin to build our own brand, the brand, the Nigerian brand that is. Very much. So just state your name and what you get. My name is Demola Oduwale. I work in global branding, global strategy. And in my, in my past life, in my younger life, I did some tourism uh, advisory for the government of Tanzania. I did some tourism architecture in Mauritius. And I did the same thing as well for Fiji. Actually, I helped build Fiji's tourism, sports tourism industry between 2009 and 2013. And who could do this for Nigeria too? As they say, God willing. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.